A fantastic property of the complex numbers is that they contain a real and imaginary part, as the complex set includes both the real and imaginary sets. We denote the real part of a complex number z as real z, and the imaginary part of z as imaginary z. To write z in terms of its parts, we can combine its real and imaginary values into an equation as such. z equals real z plus imaginary z i. Note that real z and imaginary z belong to the set of real numbers, and that the imaginary part is the coefficient of i. The imaginary unit acts like a variable with a coefficient of imaginary z. This is the most primitive form of what we call Cartesian notation, but it is standard practice to let the real part equals a and the imaginary part equals b. To this effect, Cartesian notation is often displayed as z equals a plus b i. For example, if a equals 3 and b equals 4, we could denote z as 3 plus 4 i. This form allows us to denote complex numbers with mixed parts and to then visualize them on the complex plane. To begin graphing complex numbers, we construct a two-dimensional plane with axes that correspond to the two parts of a complex number. Let the horizontal axis contain all real numbers, the real axis, real z, and the vertical axis contain all imaginary numbers, the imaginary axis, imaginary z. We can label the origin as the point 0, 0. Here we have just discovered the complex plane, otherwise known as an Argand diagram, where we can plot complex numbers. Notice that compared to a Cartesian plane, the real axis takes the position of the x-axis, and the imaginary axis takes the position of the y-axis, meaning that we may sometimes use these terms interchangeably. This similarity is also where the name for Cartesian notation emerges from. Therefore, when we plot a complex number in Cartesian form, we treat the real value as the x-coordinate, and the imaginary value as the y-coordinate. This relationship can be understood as a plus bi equals the point ab. The Argon diagram is easily divided into four quadrants. Here, I have plotted an arbitrary complex number, z equals a plus bi, where a and b are both positive, in the first quadrant of the Argon diagram. In the second quadrant, z equals negative a plus bi. In the third quadrant, z equals negative a minus bi. And in the fourth quadrant, z equals a minus bi. The quadrants are counted anti-clockwise from the positive side of the real axis. Now let's construct an Argon diagram in Desmos to practice this new notation. The complex number z equals 3 plus 4i corresponds to the point 3, 4, as seen in blue, occupying the first quadrant. The complex number w equals minus 2 plus 2i corresponds to the point minus 2, 2, as seen in red, occupying the second quadrant. The complex number c equals minus 4 minus 2i corresponds to the point minus 4 minus 2, as seen in green, occupying the third quadrant. And finally, the complex number m equals 1 minus 3i corresponds to the point 1 minus 3, as seen in orange occupying the fourth quadrant. It is tempting to see complex numbers on the Argon diagram as points in space, because the Cartesian notation prompts us to visualize them as if they were defined in a Cartesian plane, fundamentally as coordinates. However, a complex number is more closely linked to a vector, having direction and magnitude due to the properties of its arithmetic. To graph a complex number as a vector, we connect the origin to the coordinates of its Cartesian form. For example, we can graph the vectors for z, w, c, and m as such. These are called complex vectors. There is a logical question that may arise from looking at the Argon diagram. That is, if a number sits on the real axis, such as 3, then why is it considered complex? Or for that matter, why is any real number complex? It appears that they don't have an imaginary part. Let's try writing 3 in Cartesian notation. The real part, real z, is equal to 3. It has no imaginary part, so imaginary z equals 0. Therefore, z equals 3 plus 0i. Notice that 3 is confined to the singular dimension of the real axis. We are aware that the real numbers technically sit within the complex set, so a complex number with an imaginary value of 0 is considered to be a purely real complex number. Likewise, if a complex number has a real value of 0, such as z equals 0 plus 3i, it is also confined within a single axis, the imaginary axis, so it is classified as purely imaginary. Before we begin to visualize the arithmetic of complex numbers on an Argon diagram, let's first clarify the algebraic properties of the imaginary unit. When we use the imaginary unit in algebra, it acts similar to a variable. This should be a very intuitive concept. For example, i plus 8i equals 9i. Say we had 2 minus i plus 3 plus 6i. First we collect the real parts, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and then the imaginary parts, negative i plus 6i equals 5i and the solution is then 5 plus 5i. So we had to solve root 2i plus 4 minus 3i. The only real part is 4, so we can put that on one side of the term. 
it is conventional to group the imaginary parts together, so we can simplify root 2i and negative 3i as factors of i. Then we have a clean and conventional solution. We can therefore observe that the real and imaginary dimensions act independently of each other under additive operations. This is evident in the sum of two arbitrary complex numbers, z equals a plus bi and w equals c plus di. z plus w equals a plus c plus b plus di. To denote their parts algebraically, we can write real z plus w equals a plus c and imaginary z plus w equals b plus d. The same is true of their difference, as seen here. Now that we understand the addition and subtraction of complex numbers, let's visualize these operations on the Argon diagram, in Desmos. Take the complex numbers z equals 4 plus i and w equals minus 1 minus 3i. z plus w equals 3 minus 2i. Now what relationship holds between these numbers graphically? Well, if we take the vector of w and shift its tail to the tip of z, we can observe the path of z to w and then to their sum. Additionally, we can find the difference of z and w to equal 5 plus 4i. Graphing this, we observe a similar result, as w is simply reflected in the opposite direction. Notice that the sum and difference of two complex vectors directly resembles the same operations of Cartesian vectors. Furthermore, this experiment has led us to a new understanding about the relationship between the positive and negative alternatives of w. Negative w equals negative negative 1 minus 3i, which is equal to 1 plus 3i. If we graph negative w, it becomes apparent that w and negative w occupy opposing quadrants, in this case, the third and first quadrants respectively. Therefore, to multiply a complex number by negative 1 results in a 180 degree rotation about the origin. This is the negative relationship. We will expand on the cycles of complex arithmetic in a future video. As well as the negative relationship, the conjugate relationship is a frequently used operation for complex numbers. The conjugate of a complex number, z equals a plus bi, is z star equals a minus bi. Note that another frequently used notation of the complex conjugate is z bar. On the Argon diagram, this corresponds to a reflection across the real axis, as the imaginary part is multiplied by negative 1. The complex numbers, z and z conjugate, make up a complex conjugate pair. If we take the sum of a conjugate pair, an interesting result emerges. z plus z star equals a plus bi plus a minus bi, which is equal to 2a. The result is always equal to 2 real z. This means that when we graph the sum of a complex conjugate pair, it always lies on the real axis. Conversely, if we take the difference of a complex conjugate pair, a similar result arises. z minus z star equals a plus bi minus a minus bi, which is equal to 2 bi. The result is always equal to 2 imaginary z. Similar to the real sum of conjugate pairs, the difference always lies on the imaginary axis, as seen in the vector path. We have found that the properties of complex addition and subtraction were identical to that of vectors on the Cartesian plane. However, differences between Cartesian and complex vectors begin to emerge as we apply the operations of multiplication and division. When multiplied, 2D Cartesian vectors can create a scalar product, a value commonly known as a dot product, or a three-dimensional cross product whereas the product of two complex numbers creates a new complex vector. To understand why this happens, let's run through the algebra for the product of two complex numbers, z equals a plus bi and w equals c plus di. z times w, also denoted as zw, equals a plus bi times c plus di. Expanding the brackets, we get zw equals ac plus adi plus bci plus bdi squared. As i is the square root of negative one, Notice that we can simplify i squared to be negative 1. Finally, zw equals ac minus bd plus ad plus bc i, a real part of ac minus bd, and an imaginary part of ad plus bc. Notice that the real and imaginary dimensions are preserved, and we are left with a new complex vector, as i squared creates a real product. Now, let's compute an example on the Argon diagram, where z equals 1 plus i, and w equals minus 2 plus 3i zw equals 1 plus i times minus 2 plus 3i, which is equal to minus 2 plus 3i minus 2i plus 3i squared. Remember that i squared can simplify, and then we have minus 5 plus i, as seen here in the diagram. An especially useful result occurs when we take the product of a complex conjugate pair, where z equals a plus bi, z multiplied by z star equals a plus bi times a minus bi, which is equal to a squared minus abi plus abi minus b squared i squared. Once again, simplifying i squared as negative 1, we get the result a squared plus b squared. Ensure that you make a note of this product. 
As you may have noticed, it's a purely real complex number, as imaginary z times z conjugate equals zero. Take the example where z equals one plus two i, and z star equals one minus two i. z multiplied by z star equals one plus two i times one minus two i. Expanding these brackets, we get one minus two i plus two i minus four i squared. i squared equals minus one, therefore the result is five. We may have calculated this more simply by the application of the rule, z times z star equals a squared plus b squared. This property of complex conjugate pairs is profound as it can assist us with the operations of complex division. The division of two complex numbers, z equals a plus bi and w equals c plus ci, can be denoted as z over w equals a plus bi over c plus di. We can have a complex denominator, but then how would we write z over w in Cartesian notation? We must find a way to make the denominator a purely real number. This process is called realizing, or realizing the denominator. We can use the property of the product of conjugate pairs that we just discovered to turn the denominator into something more manageable. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by w conjugate, we can simplify this equation into a Cartesian notation. a plus bi times c minus di over c squared plus d squared equals ac minus adi plus bci minus bdi squared over c squared plus d squared. Then by grouping real and imaginary parts, we can simplify into Cartesian form. Therefore, real z over w equals ac plus bd over c squared plus d squared, and imaginary z over w equals bc minus ad over c squared plus d squared. Now let's compute an example with a visualization on the Argon diagram. Let z equals minus 3 plus 4i, and w equals 2 minus i. z over w equals minus 3 plus 4i over 2 minus i. Realizing the denominator, we have minus 3 plus 4i times 2 plus i over 2 minus i times 2 plus i. We can expand these terms out and then simplify, leaving us with a result of minus 2 plus i, as seen in the diagram. In the upcoming videos, you will gain a deeper understanding of the visual and numerical correlations of complex multiplication and division. We will fundamentally alter our understanding of complex number properties by discovering a new and arguably superior notation, polar form.